Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Data Dispatch. I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's start off with addressing the elephant in the room, and that is that Palantir Technologies did not get included into this quarter's S&P 500, and I think that is entirely okay because now it'll just get to the point where when it does get included, I think it'll happen sometime, that is when we can really celebrate. And this is why I was not personally obsessing over it by basically kind of betting that it was going to get included. And we talked about this kind of throughout the week, especially with some of the hype and the trendiness that did pop up. Of course, it was a trending topic as we do have a big expectation. We want PLTR, of course, to be included into the S&P 500. It just didn't happen this quarter. And that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing at all. And in terms of the general market and PLTR specifically, the price reaction was not as dramatic and drastic that I thought, which this means that, hey, a majority of the retail and the institutional investors, maybe they're not obsessing over it as much as we're kind of seeing in the headlines and in the media and just across different content creators. So let's talk about, of course, the market. We have a very strong jobs report today too, which goes against what we are wanting in terms of reducing inflation. However, the market also kind of consolidated today. So interesting interesting things happening and NVIDIA officially goes through its 10 for one stock split. So we'll be talking about that too. If you are a new or returning viewer, hit that like button, subscribe for daily videos. And of course, you guys, all know I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just collecting all that data and did it dispatching it to you. Now, I'll pop it up on the screen here. What we see with PLTR popping up here for an intraday high at 23.95. You can see some resistance right at the 24. And that's at the intraday trading. What we see with PLTR as soon as that S&P 500 announcement, we get that coming out public, and that CrowdStrike was actually included instead. We'll talk about the other stocks that were included into the announcement because that rebalance will happen on the 21st of June. You have about a 2% drop and also an additional 2% for a total of 4%, including the after hours. So right now, where Palantir sits is at 2280, which is sitting at specifically right here at this line, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing like I said at all. Compiled, I think, with a lot of the hype that was behind that. So still, low 22s right here. I think that's a good point. We'll see what happens going into next week. We do have some consolidation here in the mid-22s. We'll see if we'll find any support at that level. Could be possible. Lots of variables that I don't, don't think it's really accurate to make any big predictions right now. Now, big thing right here. What did get included into the S&P 500? That's CrowdStrike, KKR, GoDaddy. They joined the S&P 500 in the quarterly rebalance. This is a great meme here I wanted to share saying, hey, beer, uh, hey, babe, <laughs> did Palantir get added into that basket that you were talking about? Nope, that's what a lot of us are probably feeling right now. But what we did see in terms of market reaction, instant difference that we saw here, we have a Twitter post right here talking about Palantir came down about 2%. What you did have from CrowdStrike went up about 2.5% immediately and then after hours about 4.84%. Like I've seen talked about before, historically we get about that 5 to 7% increase in market cap and valuation just due to you got number one just buying pressure in terms of momentum, um, energy, emotion, but also you have just, just think of all the general funds that track these major indexes. Now, Let's get into what happened into the market today, specifically talking about the jobs report that we were expecting. And before we get too far into that nitty gritty details, looking here at the big indexes, they just slightly closed in the red. I would call this a consolidation right here. Worst thing, the NASDAQ being down 0.23%. Now, what we did get in the actual market reaction to the jobs report was that they showed a much, and I'm talking a much stronger hiring growth than expected, which is showing here, but also we had the unemployment rate rise at the same time. There is some controversy with this job report, but with the numbers that we were given, the economy added 272 thousand payroll jobs here in May, smashing expectations. The expectations were like in the low 100,000s. And also the unemployment rate did take higher, rising to 4%. It was in the high threes, I believe, before. Where we sit right here, this is showing a lot more jobs are being added to payroll than what we're expecting. This puts the brakes on the probability for those interest rate cuts happening come September. Remember what I talked about in the last video was the market was pricing in basically about a 70% probability that we were going to experience our first interest rate cuts come September. 
now that probability is starting to decrease. I see numbers are between 50 to 60 percent right now. That's where the market and Wall Street analysts are kind of sitting at. But with that being said, that's not necessarily a bad thing because we've seen the market that kind of absorbs these negative, I want to say, interest rate probability kind of predictors um, in the matter of just a trading day. So I don't really know what's going to happen come Monday because also you have Wall Street that kind of rebounded from this jobs report because there was some controversy regarding how these numbers were all collected. And with that, like I said, you also have the unemployment rate that rise. So the actual collection of this data was a little uncertain among some of the big Wall Street people out there. And that's why I don't think we experience as much as a sell off that we would originally be anticipating. So I guess that's where we sit at right now. But long story short, probability of those interest rate cuts come September, they're looking to decrease just a little bit. But of course, we have a lot of market data to still analyze before September comes. Big thing, NVIDIA officially post market markets closed now goes through its 10 for one stock split that becomes official. If you had nine shares, if you had a share of NVIDIA, excuse me, at Thursday's bell close, then you were going to be given an extra 10 shares, or an extra nine shares for a total of 10. This is going to go with an effective date starting June 10th. That is going to be Monday when the market will actually start trading at a 10 for one stock split based adjusted weight rate. Now, a lot of people are saying this is just a cosmetic effect. What does that mean? superficial effect saying, hey, the only thing, nothing changes in terms of market valuation, market cap, all that stays the same. Basically, now you have 10 shares. If you had one, shares were at 1200 bucks a piece. Now it's at 120, just dividing it by 10 fraction. Now, I think it has more than just a cosmetic effect personally. And the reason why I do is because, number one, it just looks more attractive from a psychology perspective. The fact that now a share is only 120 bucks, it used to be 1200 bucks. Yes, all the trading platforms have fractional shares now basically, but it just looks more attractive in terms of accumulating more shares. Number two is options, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Options activity can now really increase because now the price to control via call or put options to control 100 shares within a contract, those premiums are much cheaper because now you're controlling 100 shares at 120 bucks a share versus 1200 bucks a share. Just pure math right there. That's what's happening with Nvidia. What happened with Nvidia? Market close basically sat right at 1200 bucks. We see here basically consolidating perfectly on the day. So we'll see what happens come Monday. Well, we see the Palantir technology. Of course, we are not backing down on this one just because it wasn't included in the S&P 500. Like I said, we were not obsessing that over at all. Big things that we do have, of course, in the pipeline for POTR, of course, working with the Department of Defense. We've seen with the Army contract, we've all talked about the $480 million contract, of course, very successful. Big thing. We also have Oracle, great job to get into the kind of cloud software solutions area. And we see POTR talking about the early skies for a breakout. Continuing to work on this third stage consolidation, as we see PLTR that has been hanging out in these lower 20s. With a 2750 buy point, Palantir stock is now teasing an earlier trend line entry. Before we had PLTR that was sitting at those quarter one earnings, was basically sitting at about $25. And then we saw, of course, their change in future guidance, and we saw that slippage coming down to the mid 20s and seeing support and reversals at that $20 level. However, I think with the market reaction here, especially after the jobs report, we're still going to continue to see momentum coming into the market. That's my personal opinion, especially here in the short term. I think PLTR, after we've had the reality of the rumors of the S&P 500, now PLTR doesn't have that riding on its back. Not until next quarter, at least until we all start talking about it again. Earnings is exactly two months away now. We're going to start talking about earnings, and I think we're going to start seeing volatility there. And if we continue to see momentum across the market in terms of a positive variable and buying pressure, I think PLTR could be testing, considering after the S&P 500 disappointment, we could all say, in terms of market perspective, 
PLTR technologies right now here around the 23s could be testing, I think, this 25 here in the near future. And if it breaks past this 25, that's when we can talk about possibly getting into that $27 area right up here. This is where we've seen resistance. Could this buy point possibly be triggered if we start to see momentum coming in? We can't make that prediction now because there's a lot of weird things going on in the market. So we'll see what happens comes Monday and we'll have a stronger opinion. Peace out. Take care. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Catch you guys later.